The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome to the October 29th, the terrific Tuesday. It's almost the trick-or-treat Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Roads coming to you live from Delray Beach, uh, Florida. Hope you're having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day. Yep. Let's have an extraordinary day. The easiest way to have an extraordinary day is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. That's right, I'm here to serve you. I wanna go ahead and take a look at whatever instrument time frame it is that uh, you've got a curiosity about. Curiosity is a good thing, and uh, we'll see what it's doing on multiple time frames. Uh, you can, the easy way, the easy way for me to look at uh, that instrument would be to give us a call at 877-927-6648. But if you can't call in, we get you and we got you. We've got your back. All you have to do is let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in the subject heading, that would be great. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, we'll take any and all pings out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got a mixed market out here. The Dow's up 18 points. It's basically flat. The S&P's up five. That's up two tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq is uh, really not doing too bad. It's down 33 points. You would expect that. That's the NDX 100 with Microsoft trading lower, Apple, Amazon, Google trading to the downside. We'll take a look at the NQ, but really not doing too bad at all. Russell 2000 is up a half a percent. That's seven points. New York Stock Exchange is up higher. It's up um, four tenths of a percent. It's up 47 points. Um, and that's interesting because the advanced decline oscillator line continues to move lower. So there's a divergence that's going on there. It says we must be careful or should be careful. Gold is off five bucks. Silver down three pennies. Light sweet crude is flat. Uh, natural gas, anything but flat, up nearly 7% right now. 16 uh, a, uh, in the control room. If you could post a, a chart, and, and the only chart right now, really, Peter, that's uh, being posted is just my normal screen telling you where things are at. Uh, as I do change screens today while we're trying to figure out how to get my system uh, working. Uh, properly, we'll go ahead and in the den, they will go ahead and uh, post the uh, charts individually. Uh, so, uh, and you can get everything live though on Tiger TV. So maybe on one screen, if you got Tiger TV, you'll, you'll then be able to see my screen live, but they will go ahead and post the uh, charts uh, for you. So lead the charge, by the way, dollar-wise to the upside right now. We've got Zebra Technologies up 14 bucks, a little over 6%. Uh, Murata Therapeutics up 15%. That's 12 bucks. Becton Dixon up nearly 10. Roper Technologies up about 10 as well. To the downside, it's Google down 25. Grubhub is off 25 as well. That's a 43% haircut there. Beyond Meat is down 20 bucks or down 20%. So you've got some folks that are in some IPOs that are in IPO, um, mm, yeah, let's just call it, hey, when it comes to Halloween, they got the trick versus the treat out there. Let's go to our first question. Our first question coming in here from Michael P. And Michael is uh, looking for a bottom inside of ticker symbol MJ. And uh, we got a caller on the line, so we're gonna have to switch over. We'll come back to ticker symbol MJ, but uh, we've got Brent on the line. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding, how are you? I'm doing quite well, Steve, how about yourself? Doing doing good, so uh, to, uh, update us. What's going on uh, firewise uh, in your specific area? You, Yeah. We had a close call on Sunday. We uh, 
we got impacted by that whole uh, okay. them shutting off our power, which started on Saturday, kind of late afternoon on Saturday. They they were giving us different updates and kind of showing it was impending, and it did finally happen kind of later in the afternoon. Uh, you still there? Steve? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just, just uh, listening uh, to I, you I talk. Just, I heard something like there was a ringtone. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so, yeah, we were impacted by that. And then uh, because they did it, they were showing that on Sunday there was going to be some high winds, which end up happening. And, and so we had our power off. And, again, about – I was – Getting towards the afternoon, there was a bunch of fires happening all around us, not right yes. by us. But then, uh, like, probably about that same time in the afternoon, we could see smoke from our house. I mean, wow. not far, like maybe a mile away. Wow. And with the winds, yeah, real scary. We, we were busy. My wife was already gathering up pictures and grabbing some things that were personal effects that we would maybe have to, you know, oh. bail on our house. And so it was, yeah, it was touch and go there for a bit, and they... They seemed like they had a pretty solid strike team together. They were just getting on stuff really quick and, and just making sure that it didn't get turned into something worse. And so I was really appreciative of that. They got on it quickly, and but it was a little scary. I mean, it was it was close. I mean, I could see it from my house, basically. Wow, um, wow. That close. Well, we're, we're glad to hear that everything's okay and hope that it stays that way for sure. And it is, it's a, it's a crazy scene. You know, it's kind of like, so I would imagine, you know, out there, if you're turning on your news, it's probably on nonstop. Very similar to when there's a hurricane, you know, that's coming towards the East Coast. It's nonstop. But, you know, when you're elsewhere in the United States, you don't hear about it as much. But the, the, the pictures and the images of the fires and how fast they're spreading, uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing, it's, you know, but it's been like this for a long, long time. So you've, you've been like this, but a little bit worse, you think, that these days than in the past? I don't recall it being like this. They used to always have the ones down in Southern California with the Santa Ana winds, and it seemed like that was pretty common. But the last few years up here in Northern California, it's been really bad. They've they had yes. one. I guess it's been about two or three years ago in Santa Rosa. They're having another one in the same area this year. Same area is kind of being impacted. And then, of course, that Paradise Fire that happened last year that was just right. completely wiped out the entire town. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been really bad. It's, I can't exactly explain. I, mean, I know some of them have been caused, I think, by down power lines, and that's why right. they're trying to kind of get out ahead of you know, that happening again is why sure, they're sure. doing these blackouts with the, they're trying to get the power shut off before something like that happens and they can go make the repair and get it all back up to speed, you know, without the power on and, and of course not have the fire as yeah, a result. No. So that's kind of their thinking there. There's still a lot of fires happening for other reasons. You're not going to stop it completely, but I'm sure that'll, you know, at least that part of it will be eliminated to a certain extent. Although I did hear some of those, I think the two that are the big ones that are happening sound like they're still tied to that same problem from what I heard, and I'm not sure if that's been confirmed, but I think right, it right. had to do with, you know, power lines again. Right, right, right. Hey, Brent, we're, we're about to go to break, but hang on if you would be kind enough. We're going to come back. We're going to take a look at uh, UNG, folks. That's the United States Natural Gas Fund out there and with Brent in Martinez, California. So just stick with us, and we'll be back in just a few. All right, sir. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, folks, we're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're going to go take a look at uh, UNG, that's the ETF, for the uh, for natural gas. We're looking right now, uh, what is on my screen, or at least you'll be able to see this, in Tiger TV is the November contract for natural gas. And what you can see is a real wide-ranging bar today as price approaches uh, $2.63. 263 is the price. Uh, price area where natural gas uh, from a daily perspective most recently uh, broke down. So Brent, how can I help you with regard to UNG? That was actually more my question, Steve, was, was about the actual contract. Yes, okay. And the specific question was, I noticed uh, going back probably between a week and two weeks ago that uh, there was a pretty big divergence between the one you just spoke of, the November yes. contract, and then the yeah. December contract is probably about 20 cents difference. Okay. Not that long ago. And I was just wondering if there's a, a catch up effect to be in line with the, the next month contract. Is it getting ready to roll over? And if, if that is the case, I mean, again, there may be something that uh, John and Phil can comment on. I know he's really squared away on that, a lot of the commodities, and, and might yeah. have some, you know, information to provide there but it just and if that is the case that you can kind of anticipate that there's going to be well, if you have that condition happening where you see that spread between the two is there going to be a catch up and, and if you can kind of anticipate that and actually trade that is was my question got it got it so the it's a it's a great um it's a great question um, you know, John's actually listening in. He's typing in a few things out here. Maybe he might call in and, and actually shed some additional light uh, on that for you. Um, you know, if you do take a look at, so I, what I do have up on my screen, um, you know, is also the December contract right now. You know, in, in all that I can share with you, it's well above profiles, daily, uh, daily uh, time frame, short term time frames as well. Um, so actually, I say I've got to change a couple things on my system. At this stage of the game, um, natural gas 
is is bullish. I don't have the ability at this moment to put the December contract to see what that price level was where it broke down, if it does have 90 even consecutive days on a breakdown. But if we take a look at right now just the, the November one, which I can comment on, uh, price is running up towards a resistance area, and if price can close above two dollars sixty, two point six four, we'll call it really. If it can close above that, it suggests that there is a change in trend that is underway, as prior significant prior resistance will have been taken out. So that's and we're just we're, we're not that far from it. Um, I don't know, you know, it's a wide ranging bar. Markets don't usually end on wide ranging bars. Of course, that could mean that tomorrow and the next day could just be uh, sliding side sideways out here. Um, but with regard to UNG, so the breakdown actually occurred, uh, I'll give you the actual day where the TD setup nine count began uh, its pattern to the downside. That was September 19th. And that's a $2.63 level. And if I were to take a look at UNG, uh, because when I did uh, suggest to subscribers uh, getting in into uh, natural gas, the price target that we came up with, uh, Brent, was the uh, September 19th session as well. Uh, which is actually priced at 2247. Uh, but even when we wrote about it, we discussed it, we said, look, this is just a target, but we really need to take a look at the resistance level and any patterns that are forming on the uh, daily time frame chart. Um, right now, there's no patterns forming other than price getting up to resistance. So uh, the only other thing I can do then is say, well, all right, so we know it's up at its highs. It's not going to uh, break any support levels, but what are the support levels on a pullback where this would suggest that, uh, okay, maybe the run to the upside is over and there's going to be deeper pullbacks. And for those, I go to a 30 minute time frame, a 60 minute time frame, a two hour time frame, and just take a look at the patterns that are going on. So the first question I would ask myself is there any kind of topping signal that I see for those time frames? And here, the only topping patterns that I'm showing would be the TD set of uh, nine count patterns. Well, we happen to be in bar number eight on a 30 minute basis. So this will end at 1 30. So bar number uh, nine uh, is what we need a full nine count out here would say maybe by two o'clock we get the nine count. Of course, the high can occur on bars eight, nine or ten. Well, we know it's going to be at least eight at this stage of the game out here. That doesn't mean that uh, that would be a sell on a daily basis. It's just kind of an ability for you and I to take a look at what's going on intraday. And where is it that we could begin to see some type of a pullback? Now, if it's just a pullback to test support, which in this case is $2.50, but there is a new potential nine count pattern that is underway. And if that pattern completes, which I'm gonna assume that it will at this stage, then the real level of support to be watching to the downside is gonna be $2.55 or so it appears. So at this stage, I don't have any kind of topping signals out there. And uh, so for example, uh, subscribers that are still long natural gas, if I were writing the newsletter right now, I would say to stay put um, versus cut put, uh, if you know what I mean. That sounds good, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, uh, I have one other quick comment just about the fires before I, I know it's probably Please. close to the break here, but just that most people probably don't realize that, you know, if they don't live here that we just have Seasonally, we, we don't get rain other than about, you know, like it can start around this time, goes through you know, maybe April, May. Yeah. So there's just, this is the driest part of the, the season, and the winds normally will kind of shift. They'll come offshore instead of onshore where you have the marine, marine influence. You got the yes. phone ringing there. Um, so I just, uh, yeah, this is like the most vulnerable time right now with, the, with it being so dry, and then the winds, of course, don't help. So. Well, we're sending you all of our uh, luck, good fortune, white light, all that stuff. And uh, please keep us posted. Always good to, ch to chat with you. I sure will. Thanks again, Steve, for everything. Just have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. You bet. My pleasure. That was Brent right, in Martinez, California. So uh, let's go back and take a look at, uh, I had mentioned earlier that uh, Mike, Mike P. wanted to take a look at MJ. He's looking for a bottom here. MJ, by the way, is the Alternative Harvest ETF Fund. Uh, that is, um, uh, and what we, we can see right now is this chart here that we start with, if you can see it, if you can't, I'll explain. It's our three panel view where we take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly timeframes, and we look for uh, TAS market profiles. 
support and resistance. It's always so important to understand where your support and resistance is. Now, price is uh, trading above the uh, top of its uh, daily profile, which is 1938. Price is at 1975 out there. We're going to go see if there's anything that suggests why, why did it pull back today? Is there any pattern or anything out there? Um, when we took a look at this last week, we didn't see a bottom. But we did see that price, there was a new profile that formed, and price was above the top of it. So it's not like we were saying, hey, go short this yesterday. We also can say uh, that we now know this week, Michael, that we have a new profile from a weekly perspective. Bullish in structure, 1888 is support, 19, around uh, 1969 is the center of the box and 2212 is the top. Now we're gonna go to a breakout here and when we come back, we're gonna take a look at Stevie's other charts. We're gonna see, hey, what's going on on a daily basis out here? But what I can say is that uh, alternative harvest has not formed the type of bottoming signals that I use to identify a bottom. Doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. When we come back, we'll take a further look into it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastery Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, guys. 
So, so Mike, we're taking a look at MJ right now. We're looking at the daily time frame chart. And uh, here's what we can see. We know that yesterday, what uh, this ETF did was it formed a TD setup nine count pattern with the uh, bar nine being the high and with prices gapping to the downside, pulling back the key level. So when it creates that nine count, what it does, is it gives you a breakout support area. We were taking a look at breakdown resistance when we we're looking at the natural gas contract. And here is an example of a support level. Now you'll also see the top of the profile. We had talked about that as before we went to breakout here, but you really want to see, so if this has bottom, has formed some type of bottom out here, Michael, what you really want to see is on this pullback, you want to see price hold 1917. If price closes below 1917, price should at least get back to 1840, the bottom of its box, and maybe even beyond that out there. Of course, you want to pay attention to the new weekly profile, but we know why it topped. It formed that topping pattern. Now price is pulling back, and typically when you see this pattern, the role of a top is to always go back and test support. So we've got breakout support at 1917, around 1938 is the top of its daily box, and Stevie's red line is 1899. That's kind of like the last bastion of hope is Stevie's red line out there. So if those levels hold, then what you might see is an A to B equals CD to the upside, but we have to take it one day at a time. It has a valid topic, confirmed that yesterday. Price action today is not unusual out here, and uh, but I don't have a, a bottom. I don't have the type of bottom. I don't have wave number seven. I don't have a TD setup nine count. I don't have an A to B equals CD to the downside. This is the weekly time frame. I don't have anything to suggest that uh, MJ has actually bottomed. Remember, I use a handful of patterns, three or four, that help us to identify tops and bottoms. But not every time will an instrument adhere to those. When we do see instruments that are following those that flight path, so to speak, it really assists us and provides uh, me with more with with a higher probability and more conviction to be able to say to you share with you that yes something is bottomed I don't have that here and uh, but we do have a topping pattern so Michael where you asked me has it uh, bottomed what we actually have inside of uh, alternative harvest is a is a topping signal and I didn't mention it but I probably should here because now you take a look at the weekly time frame chart prices trading below Stevie's red line tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero and on the daily time frame at top before price could even get up to that resistance level, which is 2136. It's not really a good scene. So I don't know what's going on in the uh, weed business out here, but uh, I don't want you to get caught in the weeds, so to speak, and uh, just simply know that that TD setup nine count is identified at top versus what you were looking for was a bottom out there. John wrote in. John wants to take a look at, uh, he wants to go take a look at Shake Shack out here. S-H-A-K. So let's go take a look at it. And the question Question is, is this a short? So we take a look at Shake Shack. Here's what we know. We know price is trading below the daily, the weekly uh, set of profiles, not the case inside the monthly time frame. So you're asking me, is it a short? Let's go take a look at Shake Shack from a daily chart using Stevie's uh, tools out here. Is it a short? Oh, boy. So the real short, John, came in when this confirmed its roads momentum indicator top out here. That was on the trading day of September 11th when price went ahead and gapped to the downside. That's when price was moving higher, doing less relative energy into September the 6th out there. Um, the price on that gap to the downside came back and tested support. You see that 95.15 level? That was breakout support. So support held, much like what we're suggesting that Michael look at inside of ticker symbol and. J will support hold or not. Well, when Shake Shack broke through that level of support, closed below it on October 2nd, that was kind of like uh, uh, sayonara to the downside out here. We do not have a bottoming signal. It does look like price is headed to 75.71. You're trading 82.48 out here. But here's what I would do, John. To the extent that you have a hankering for going short Shake Shack, um, Wait to see if you get a little bit more bounce out here, maybe up to 87.32, which is Stevie's red line. Like, I don't have a full indication that that's what it's likely to do is to head up there. Um, but I'd like, I'd prefer if you're going to go ahead and trade this. You're like in the middle of between support and resistance out here. And uh, so it's kind of a midstream, but, you know, uh, I. Maybe that maybe that will work for you. I, I don't know. The monthly time frame chart out here is suggestive of so if this month 
Closes above the close of bar number five, which looks like it will. Bar number five, by the way, that close was 72.20. We're at 84.38. You're going to get a TD setup, a valid TD setup nine count in a few days out here. Now, what that's going to suggest is that price then should get back and test its level of support. That's Stevie's green line, and that's price at 76.04. Uh, and if price were to move below 76.04, you know, then you've got a huge retracement going on. So does it look like Shake Shack is headed lower? The answer is yes. Is now the opportune time to take a short? Um, that one's a tougher call, John. So I hope that this uh, helps you out. I see we've got another question here coming in from Alex. Alex is uh, recently wrestled 2000. IWM has been an up, has been in a strong, has been strong. Did your work find the small caps make up, make up moves first? Um, well, here's, so what I have found, Alex, I haven't tested this out recently. What I have found is that when in a bull market, you'll see the NQ and the Russell 2000 lead. You will see the NQ, the Russell 2000 RTY out here. If we take a look at the futures contract, you will see them lead out here. Now, it's hard for me to say that the Russell 2000 is the leader of the pack. It hasn't taken out prior highs. That is not the case inside the ES Mini. That is not the case inside of the NQ out here. And so um, I, I don't know how else to, you know, what else I can share with you. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that it's always like that. But uh, better bullish conditions are when the NQ and the Russell 2000 are leading to the upside. Um, it also works in the opposite direction. So we, we don't have that either. Uh, out here with regard to the uh, without regard to the uh, the Russell 2000 the NQ out here everything is above uh, resistance almost yeah everything when I say everything I'm looking at the four futures contracts the ES is above 3032 the NQ is above uh, what's the number here 80 it's very close but it's still above it 80 80 80 71. Uh, the Russell 2000 is above 1575, and the uh, Dow is above 26. 20. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 27042. Uh, so everything is still in breakout bullish mode. Hey, let's go to Sarasota. We got a caller on the line, Ray in Sarasota, calling to discuss carbo ceramics. Ray, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, Excellent. CRR, I own some shares, and uh, I sold some on the uh, last move up, uh, and I'm looking to rebuild my position. And uh, can I add at this point, or uh, is, it, is it going lower? Great question. So here's what we know right now. So if we take a look at what it's doing today, it's testing the bottom of its daily profile. That's at $1.75. It's trading at 180. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what this is doing as it's trading into October 10th. October 10th, there were 163,000 shares. You've already done 107,000 shares. So it almost seems like Carpo Ceramics is pulling back to a prior swing point with maybe a bit too much volume. But Ray, do me a favor, please stay on the line. We'll come back. We'll take a look at Carbo Ceramics and uh, and help you out. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back now, folks. We're taking a look at carpal ceramics. CRR is a ticker symbol. We're on the line with Ray in Sarasota. So, Ray, um, what I have up on my screen right now is a daily time frame chart for carpal ceramics. And what we're going to take a look at is uh, this bottomed back on July 26. Uh, it did it with a, a TD setup nine count pattern out here. And then it was like a little rocket ship. Went from about 70 cents all the way up to about $3 or so. So a nice move to the upside. Then it begins a pullback and it creates its next set of its next bottom a much higher bottom out here on October 11th and it does it with the same pattern a TD set up a nine count pattern it also does it on bar number eight now today what we know is that carbo ceramics is pulled back to support we don't know whether support will hold or not. That's at $1.75. And by that support level, I'm referring to the bottom of its TAS daily profile. Here's what we do know. Today is also going to be bar number five, or it appears it'll be bar number five of a TD setup nine count. Now, is the third time the charm? In other words, uh, that the bottom would really come in when it forms bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. I don't know the answer to this. If I were, um, if I were uh, Johnny Carson, what was it? What was the character that he, that he used to do? Do you remember? Do you, did you ever listen to Johnny Carson, Ray? His shows. Yeah. Karnak. Was it Karnak? If I, if I, Karnak. I think it was Karnak. Karnak. Uh, if I could yeah. use my Karnak skills, and that would be wonderful. But I don't have them. But if, if you're trying to build a position and you're not worried about really trying to buy the bottom tick here, all that I can share with you is support is held today. It would not surprise me to see this at least move down to, um, which would mean for at least another three or four days to form that TD setup nine count pattern. Um, I think looking for the next bottom makes sense. And the reason that I say that for you is because of the weekly time frame chart, which did form a nice bottoming pattern out here. Rose momentum indicator bottom signal. Prices above Stevie's red line, which is a buck 36 out here. So on the next bottoming signal that you get in CRR, I can see adding back to your position, letting this thing try to run up to 364, where it should run into real resistance out here. Whether today is the right day or not, I don't know. But you're trying to rebuild your position. So maybe you put a little on now, maybe 25% or whatever percentages that you're comfortable with of the of that 
of that position that you're trying to build and then wait to see if we get another TD set up a nine count pattern over the course of, the, well, by, let's say by Friday or Monday. That's helpful. That's really helpful. Do you have time for one more NAT? Sure, sure. Let's go take a look at this. That's uh, Nordic American tankers or something along those lines. So tell us what you're doing there and how I can help you. Uh, that's one that I've uh, owned for some time. I've traded it. I've got a position. I sold out some uh, uh, when it got up to around 430 last week. And once again, I'm, I'm trying to uh, rebuild a position because I, I think they're going to come out with a good earnings report next month. Okay, so here's what we know right now. So you got a brand new market profile that's formed for its weekly time frame. Resistance is 447. It's bullish in structure. So the center line, which is at 363, says that inside this profile, by the way, the bottom is 335. But with inside that profile, uh, both buyers and sellers are most comfortable with price at 363. That's where they believe there is fair value. Price doesn't have to stop there, but that would be a spot you could take a look at entering. But the bottom of its box is 335, and the bottom of the daily profile is 327. So I would say between 327 and and 363, those would be areas to consider uh, adding to it. But now we got to go look at Stevie's other charts out here, see if there's any kind of signal on the daily charts to uh, to give us any type of other information. So it made a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom way back in uh, September, around September the uh, 4th. Uh, that didn't work. Let me see if I can do this here. That's why I, oh, I see I grabbed the wrong uh, button. That doesn't help a whole lot. Um, yeah, so this thing tops with wave number seven. Um, that, that may not mean anything to you, Ray, but oftentimes markets will will top or bottom with uh, with part of the Chapman wave count. The, the count that I look for is wave number seven or letter G on my chart right now. That's the market singing the key of G. So you've got an effective top out here. Uh, with price trading below Stevie's green line, which also happens to be the top of the daily profile. Now I'm going to, and today it looks like it may be bar four of a TD set nine count. I'm going to suggest to be patient right here too. Wait to see if price will pull back into this 327, 347-ish type area out there. And the reason I say that is because you've got a valid topping pattern out here, the kind that I look for. And now seeing that if this has worked, the real role and responsibility of sellers is to try to push things down to support. And we're kind of in the middle of support out here. So I'd rather you wait to see if they can do their job. If they can't do their job, you know, that tells you about strength of Nordic American tankers. But um, earnings don't come out till next week. Uh, why don't you just sit tight for, uh, for uh, several days out here? Right. Okay, great. As usual, you've been a big help, Steve. Appreciate uh -huh. your words. My pleasure. Thanks for calling, and best of luck with uh, with your uh, trades out there. Um, all right, folks, so let's see. Hector writes in, and Hector wants to go take a look at the ticker symbol SNAP. So let me type that into my other screen. We'll get here to our e-signal screen, see what their profiles look like, uh, SNAP. And uh, what Hector says is, uh, can I back up my taco truck? Because it is Taco Tuesday. And you can always back that up. Then... Uh, I'm not really a margarita guy, but I'll meet you there for Corona or a Modella Negro or, uh, you know, some or, uh, some kind of beer out there. And I'm with you on the tacos. I think tonight I may be going and get a little shrimp and uh, steak at tacos. Sounds like a good idea. But he wants to know if he can back up the truck. And, you know, Stevie, what his thoughts are about backing up the truck, never back up the truck. Just use the Stevie's 1% rule out there because you want to make sure that you have that truck forever. But here's what we know about uh, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Right now, price is above the top of its daily profile. That's 1434. That's bullish. Price has found resistance at the top of it or at the bottom of its weekly profile, and that was at 1503 out here. And we don't have to worry about the monthly time frame. So now what we've got to do here for Hector and his fuel injectors is go take a look at the daily time frame chart and you've got that nice roads momentum indicator bottom no bullish reversal signal out here so i'm going to say uh, hold off on backing up the uh, truck uh, so to speak uh, so the daily time frame you know i just don't really have anything solid for you um and I would, and with price uh, having rejected the bottom of its weekly profile, a little dangerous. Now let's go look at the weekly chart. Why is it, re why is it rejecting that area? And, and now we know. There you go. 
So take a look at the weekly chart out here, Hector. Look how this forms a beautiful bottom. It does with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. It does this here back on December 28th. Price moving lower, doing less route of energy. The cavalry arrives with a little piercing candle, hammer candle the very following week, and then makes a nice run until what? Until it forms a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. It does this with the old dark cloud cover on September 27th out here. Uh, you are in bar number five, potentially bar number five. It depends on where price closes this week. This pattern may just simply go away way, but we've got a really valid topping pattern out here and a signal. And, uh, and with price trading below the bottom of that weekly box, Stevie's going to say you've got to stay away from this game right now. We just have the longer term or the intermediate term, which we'll call the weekly time frame, is not providing you with a ton of good information. And then, Hector, the icing on the cake, the line in Stevie's Corona is it looks like uh, last week, uh, on a monthly basis, it looks like you've got a potential TD setup nine count pattern that is forming. So stay put on snap, crackle, and pop. No backing up the truck, unless it's with cases of corona with few lives. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Thanks for everybody who's written in or called in today. Let's kind of use the two-minute wrap here to get a feel for where we're at in the market. So we're just going to start here by taking a look at the cash indices for the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ 100, and Russell 2000. And what you should see is, your, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, is you should see that uh, we're still in a consolidation pattern. 
Uh, we're in consolidation pattern inside the Dow. Uh, if you just take a look at the diagonal, it's monthly time frames. We're looking at a little diagonal uh, a, a line connecting the highs from January of 2018 to the highs of October of 2018. That has contained, that's put a, put a lid on the uh, Dow. If we were to see a move above that, then I would say, okay, we have some type of breakout going on. But we're up towards resistance, not totally there, but close. The S&P 500, really the same thing. And so this is up towards a resistance level. The same thing inside the NDX 100 and the Russell 2000 is still dealing with, in essence, the highs from February of 2019, a real consolidation out there. That's what the daily cash indices are showing us. That says to both you and I, you got to be careful. Why? Because you're up towards the top of resistance. So. If you were the type of person who had a bearish outlook, I could totally understand your consideration of taking a bearish position right now. You don't have any signals to do that, so don't please, please don't misinterpret that. We do have some concern, or we should have some concern. We take a look, I mentioned this as we were opening the show. You do have a higher closing high right now inside the New York Stock Exchange, and panel number two, the advanced decline oscillator, that is not the case. The advanced decline oscillator continues to lose value. Now, it's still above zero, but you, when we do see these divergences, the divergence between the direction of price and the advanced decline oscillator level out here tells us to be careful. It's about an impending retracement. Could, you know, to the depth, the depth of that retracement will be dependent upon perhaps like the uh, spot VIX index where its trading relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average, which is at 1563 in the spot. VIX is at 13.12 right now. So um, everything is bullish as we speak at 1.56 in the afternoon. But things could change, so just stay tuned. And tune in tomorrow again at 1 o'clock. And uh, I'll be happy to share with you everything and anything that I can to assist you with your trading and investing. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.